All right, so I've been getting a lot of questions about the day in life of a informatics pharmacist and a informatics pharmacist even is. To be honest, I've been completely avoiding this question like a politician, but figured I'd put something out there to kind of shed a little bit of light on this field. Uh, at the very basic level, we are individuals that understand both the clinical and non-clinical domains of healthcare. I like to think of it kind of as a liaison between pharmacy and information technology. Because of that, it may sound kind of a surprise to you, but one of the skills that you need for this field is communication. Opposed to what a lot of individuals might think, people who are in this field are typically you know, very introverted, don't communicate much, stuck in a cubicle, and probably play a lot of games and it's kind of a nerd. I mean, it's kind of, that's me, but you know, that's, that's not everyone else. But similar to how we communicate differently when counseling patients versus speaking with other healthcare providers, we have to be able to communicate clinically when working with our clinical folks and technically when speaking with our technical folks. All right, so for a quick rundown of what informatics pharmacist does, we like to use the term medication use process. And we like to say what we do encompass the entire medication use process. You kind of think of it like the life cycle of a medication from the time the medication is ordered until the medication is administered. Granted, there are many, many steps before medication or is ordered and many steps after a medication is administered. So things like supply chain, transitions of care, and outpatient workflows really should be considered in this entire medication use process. But that's kind of beyond what I want to talk about today. All right, so one of the easiest examples I'm going to use to explain is computerized provider order entry or CPOE. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of the process in which providers can place orders for medications or procedures electronically. Uh, let's say they place an order for an antibiotic like vancomycin. You know, so you know what sh what should they see when they search for it? You know, what doses should they see? How often should they be allowed to order that medication? Should there be a button that allows them to order their beloved one gram Q12? Should we include a button for 15 mg per cake, 20 mg per cake? 35 mix per cake, you know, is that even appropriate? And that's kind of where Informatics Pharmacist comes in. Uh, we use our clinical knowledge to determine what is appropriate and leverage our knowledge of the information technology tools to make that happen. But moving on to the verification steps by our pharmacists, we help design the screens that our pharmacists see uh, when they verify these medications. We know that pharmacists need to see information like you know, what medications the patient was on prior to being admitted, what, what allergies the patient has to various medications, you know, what was their last serum creatinine, so we can calculate the estimated creatinine clearance. And because we are pharmacists, we have that type A personality where we're probably going to do it for the ideal body weight, adjusted body weight, and the total body weight. Now, moving on to dispensing. A hospital typically employs automation technology to carry out their deeds. The most common example here are automated dispensing cabinets, or ADCs for short. The two most common ones you probably heard about are Pixis or OmniCell. You, you can basically think of these as huge dressing cabinets uh, with each drawer having multiple pockets for medications. Now, when a provider orders a medication, which is subsequently verified by a pharmacist, an interface message is sent over to these ADCs. So when the nurse goes to administer medications that are due for the patient, only the appropriate medications pop open so the nurse can retrieve it and give it to the patient. It really helps to improve safety and it gets medications to the patient in a very timely and efficient manner. One of my most favorite things about pharmacy informatics is reporting and analytics. There's a huge reporting need in healthcare in general to meet goals for compliance, metrics, and to make sure folks are you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing. The same goes for pharmacy. Uh, so some examples here are formulary compliance, barcode medication administration compliance, and turnaround times for time critical meds. As an informatics pharmacist, we understand how the data is stored into the electronic health record and we have the skills to query that data, analyze it, and present it in a very useful manner to our managers and directors so they can make these business decisions on, on it. Decisions that are well above my pay grade. So that's kind of a, a very generalized overview of pharmacy informatics and I'm just gonna transition a little bit to what I do and how that kind of differs from one informatics pharmacist to the next. At Mayo, I'm personally in charge of transitioning the antimicrobial stewardship program, the infection control program, and a portion of the clinical decision support rules currently in Mayo 
into Epic. For stewardship, I design, build, and implement the tools that our stewardship providers use to carry out various interventions. So things like building a rule that finds patients that are on a potential bug drug mismatch. I use my clinical knowledge of what is ineffective treatment for that particular pathogen, build rules to find those patients for our providers so they can intervene on those patients to get them the appropriate treatments. For infection control, one of the main things I do is the build of the regulatory reports that are required for NHSN. And if you didn't know, it's kind of a regulatory requirement to report on various types of hospital acquired infection. So I designed the tools or reports that our infection preventionists use to find these patients that have these infections, abstract that information, and ultimately export it out to the NHSN for auditing and reimbursement purposes. That's kind of what I do in a nutshell, but the roles and responsibilities of informatics pharmacists really differ depending on a lot of things like the organizational size, uh, your leadership, what vendor did you go with for your electronic health record, the resources that your institution has, and many others. And just to give you a couple of examples, uh, I was at a large community hospital, about 819 beds during my PGY-1 residency, and the pharmacy informatics team was comprised of just two individuals. And they really did it all. Basically, everything I described and more. Uh, they were my very first informatics mentors. So I was very fortunate uh, to have received very well-rounded training. Now, in contrast, in larger institutions with multiple hospitals, for example, at my PGY2 in Utah, it's very common to be specialized. Like they had someone that was kind of the point for order set build, uh, someone else that was the point for billing and compliance, and someone else that was point for reporting purposes. And we had about seven individuals on our pharmacy informatics team. Of course, that's not always the case at larger institutions. Like I said earlier, it really depends. So to give an example, at Mayo, we have about 30 or so individuals on our pharmacy informatics team working on the EPIC project. And at Mayo, we're not only multiple hospitals, but we're multiple hospitals in multiple states. So there are a lot of considerations that we have to think about, like state-specific regulations, hospital size. So we have very large hospitals down to the small 50-bed critical access hospitals. As I kind of stated before, I specialize somewhat in the infectious disease realm, but my colleagues specialize in areas like anesthesia, research, oncology, automation technology, and things of that sort. Basically the point is, depending on your role and organization and all these other factors, it really differs um, from one informatics pharmacist to the next. All right, so hopefully this was kind of helpful. If you have any further questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until next time.